Trump taxes. I spoke with CPA Daniel Geltrude. Have you ever seen, I, I mean, we've talked, we've seen today major corps that have written off major losses, but an individual in a single year, even if there was some carryover, basically taking a 900 plus million dollar loss in a single year. I mean, you've seen some interesting returns. Have you ever seen a number that big? Well, there's no question it's a, it's a big number. From my perspective, in, in terms of working with the wealthy in our family office practice, those types of numbers, quite frankly, in that world are not that unusual. Now, granted, it's a big deal because the average person looking at that number feels it's overwhelming, but Donald Trump is playing in a much, much different league. Okay, Daniel, however, I've heard a lot of people that are playing in that area code. Nobody has heard that single in number. Moreover, um, they're talking about the two different Trumps. One, who's very proud of his acumen, but also the same guy who's threatened to sue the Times here, although he won't deny any of the numbers. You also know from the reporting that one of the uh, CPAs who did the filing here said, yep, they got the numbers right. Do you believe that what he did and basically what it potentially could carry over that for 18 years, the guy didn't pay a cent in income taxes, that that in fact makes him smarter. When you look at the numbers and how disastrous some of those investments were, we should question the guy's business savvy. Well, you have two separate issues there. When we're talking about the, the tax aspect of this, we're talking about net operating loss carry forward. So the rule at that time was that you could carry your losses back three years and carry forward for 15. Now remember, we're looking at an incomplete tax return. We have three pages from just one year. But let's step back. If it weren't Donald Trump, you could have the local businessman, a plumber, who had, let's say, a $90,000 loss, he would be subject to the same rules. So I, I'd like to make it clear that what happened here from a tax perspective is no different from Donald Trump than it is for someone else. Well, Daniel, it's one just thing, that and you know, a lot more zeros. Oh, but it's a little bit different. And you know, Daniel, that the local plumber doesn't have LLCs or S Corps that he's putting this stuff into. Yes, he can have carryovers, but when you got a dynastic family here and you can move the money around, he's afforded Donald Trump certain things that no tax, average taxpayer, let alone the plumber, your analogy does. Now, I got a separate question where it says no harm, no foul here. Look what happened to the shareholders. They had in this new corpy set up, they had their shares valued at more than 35 bucks a share. It got down to 17 cents a share. Meanwhile, he's taken this right off. At the same time, he stiffed the contractors, let alone the industry that went down the toilet. This isn't a no harm, no foul here as much as he loves to play it out to be, or as he said during the debate, it makes him smart. Well, I don't know about making him smart. What we're talking about with someone like Donald Trump, he's paying a lot of money to have the best accountants and the best lawyers looking at the tax laws to make sure that he's taking advantage of every single opportunity that there is. As far as the shareholders losing money and what business dealings he had that caused that loss, again, that's a separate issue. But just do something basic. If you're doing two filings, you're doing the filings for Trump as a CPA, and you're also doing um, the filings, let's say, for a producer who worked on The Apprentice. If you step out, and again, Trump has decided not to release his returns here, and there's been no denial that these are actual returns that came to the front page of the Times this weekend. If you step it out, in the years that he did The Apprentice, so he's getting 100 grand a pop here for each episode. If you're a producer working on this show and you didn't lose your shirt on business dealings before, you're paying income tax on every dollar that you generate in terms of payroll. On the flip side, Donald Trump conceivably, if you're in this 18 year interregnum, he's not paying a cent of income tax on any of it. How does that make any type of equity? I know it's legal, Daniel, but if you're the average person sitting at home more than, oh, well, the rich guy's got this and I don't. How does it make sense that he takes home much more in terms of every cent on a dollar that he makes from The Apprentice, while the same producer working on the show, they're paying, like you and me, the taxes to Uncle Sam? Well, look, when you're talking about anyone who's a business owner, so if they have an LLC, if they have a corporation, they are afforded the same tax rules. The numbers, again, would be smaller, Richard. I'm not questioning that. But if you're working as an employee for a company, as you are, and, and, and you have a loss and you don't have a business that's around that, yeah, you're not going to be able to take advantage of that.
That's the way the tax code is. Now, if, if we don't like it, we have to talk to Congress about changing it. But that's not Donald Trump's fault. It is though an election year, Daniel, if you can separate yourself from, from the accounting world to just being a voter out there, the person's gonna say at the end of the day, hold on a second. Here I am out of my pocket, I'm paying to fix the roads here on infrastructure projects. I'm making sure that the troops when they go out in the field, I'm paying for defense, I'm paying for the vets when they come home. Trump for 18 years conceivably, and even before that, if you look at the 91 and 93 returns that we saw before for the casino licensing forms, this guy for decades hasn't paid a cent in taxes, and that's somehow right? I know you say it's the law, but as a person participating in a democracy, it doesn't feel right, Daniel. Uh, listen, there's no question about if, you, if you're taking this from an emotional standpoint and the way you're laying out the facts that way, you're right. It doesn't feel good. But certainly there's a lot of people that are supporting Donald Trump and, and they believe in the things that he says. As I say, we're going to find out in 30-something uh, days. Daniel Geltra, I really appreciate yes, a few will. minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you.